A little over a week ago, I set out to make the most useful and practical type of application, a desktop pet. I feel like outside of a few examples, I haven't really seen many of these since the olden days of computers. I remember them being fun and weird and janky, so I wanted to try to replicate that. Since I've been trying to learn Godot, I decided to use it again for this project, which may have actually made certain things a lot more difficult than they needed to be, but I learned a lot and I have a lot to share. So this is my journey making a desktop pet in Godot. So I started out in the first day by trying to make some pixel art and animations for a potential pet. I would totally change these up many times throughout this journey, but it gave me something to start with. Then I made a Godot project and added the sprite to the scene, and then started trying to figure out how to actually make it render with a transparent background so you could just see it on your desktop. Transparent. <laughs> My initial idea for how to implement the pet was to make the Godot window full screen and transparent and have your pet moving around that transparent window and then setting the mouse pass through to true so that you could click through it. But that just wasn't working and I'm still honestly not sure why it doesn't work. It seems like just some sort of bug with Godot and maybe the operating system. I was trying to figure out another approach since just setting mouse pass through didn't seem to be working. And I found that the window has another property called mouse pass through polygon, which allows you to set a polygon region of the screen that accepts mouse clicks and then everything outside of that will pass the mouse click through. So in theory, I could just set the mouse pass through polygon to a polygon that encompasses just my character, and then the rest of the screen will pass through mouse clicks. But I just couldn't get that working. I didn't know what was going wrong, and I was getting a bit tired, so I gave up and decided to come back the next day. <laughs> The next day I came back and I decided that I wasn't satisfied with my pet pixel art, so I decided to try to make some more. I came up with this kind of bunny bear design, and this would change many more times still over the course of this project. Then I went back to trying to figure out why setting mouse pass through polygon wasn't working as I wanted, and it took me a while. There were some weird visual issues, and I had to tweak some window settings and some code, but eventually I got it working, and I got my pet showing up transparent over the windows. Pets obviously can't just be stationary, so I then decided I wanted to make the pet move across the window, and to do that I had to make sure to update the mouse pass through polygon as the pet moved across the screen based on the sprite's location. I then made the pet follow your mouse movements, and I noticed some weird visual glitches at this point, kind of around the edges of the mouse pass through polygon, and I wasn't entirely sure why those were happening. I'm still not entirely sure. I don't know what that box is from the character. I guess switching to physics process fixes that weird issue. And then switch up the art again. Now for a third time to a fox I found on itch.io. Not something I made myself, but that will change again. And I thought it was looking pretty cute. It was a bit hard though to edit my code at this point because the pet kept constantly walking over it. I then made it so that the pet plays back an idle animation once it gets to its destination, which at this point was where your mouse was. At this point I started thinking about how I could expand upon this idea and let the pet interact with maybe other pets or other objects in the world on the desktop, and that's where this whole thing kind of fell apart. I realized that with my current approach of this full screen transparent window, I actually just couldn't add more objects or more pets to this window because when you set mouse pass through polygon, it actually just doesn't render anything outside of that polygon, at least on windows. And that would be a problem because nothing else would show up other than the pet. And you can only have one mouse pass through polygon set per window, so I couldn't just have two, one for the pet and one for its home. I was doing some research and I found a really interesting article that would end up helping me a lot that described the technique for making multiple windows share the same world in Godot, basically little views into the same world. And I didn't understand at all how to implement this when I first found this article but it would come in handy a little bit. So because at the time I wasn't totally understanding that article, I decided to try to do my full screen transparent window with another small window on top. And I actually did get that approach working. I had both pets showing up on the screen, but it was really tricky to handle mouse events and get them to go to the right window to the right pet. I was trying to forward relevant input events from one window to another, depending on where they clicked but it was just getting really tricky. At this point, I wasn't loving how this project was feeling. It felt very hacky and like I was fighting Godot and the operating system and that mouse pass through didn't really feel like it was consistently working. So I was realizing what I probably already knew earlier in the day that I really needed to just sit down and rethink my whole approach to this project. So I decided to take a break and come back the next day. The next day I came back and I decided to just completely scrap the project and start over from scratch. Let's just start over. <laughs> 
I had spent some more time looking through that multiple windows article and I understood the approach a bit better. So I decided I wanted to try to implement something based on that to just avoid mouse pass through issues in general. I think I'm going to try making the main window just as small as the character. And then I will maybe try spawning in other windows that show the same world as the character is in. That way I think I won't have to worry about mouse pass through as much because that seems kind of buggy. I spent a while longer here looking at the tutorial article and the code and trying to figure out how to actually get this working in my game. I started out by placing my pet and some potion sprites I had made in my main scene and my idea was that I would show these potion sprites in these world windows. Then I made a world window class that extended the base Godot window node. The initial script for this class ended up actually being pretty simple. All I had to do was set the world 2D of the window to match the main windows world to D once the main window had fully loaded. And then in process, I would update the position of the attached camera to match the position of the window on the screen so that you would see the correct underlying world depending on where the window was. I did run into some bugs here, had to do some troubleshooting. Why are they different? Which one's the real one? But I eventually got it working where I could just move that window around my screen and see peaks into my underlying world, the same world as the pet is in. Okay. I guess this is working, question mark. I then added some code to spawn world windows for each object on the screen so that they would wrap where they were so you could see each potion without having to move a window around and I would improve this later, but it was working for now. This day started out yet again by trying to make more pixel art. I had decided at this point that I wanted my pet to be a bird because I thought it would be fun for it to be able to fly around your desktop, maybe land on top of windows, things like that. So I needed to make some more art. This was difficult for me. I tried to make it a dove. It ended up maybe more like a seagull. So I'm just calling it a bird. I spent a lot of time here trying to animate it in different ways. I made an idle animation where it squishes and gets stretchy. And I made a flying animation, which I later improved. And I also tried to make a walking animation, but it didn't look very good and I didn't end up using it anyway. <laughs> that tail is pretty crazy. Fly animation is not that bad, honestly. I was still having issues at this point trying to figure out how user input was working because I wanted the user to be able to click on the bird and click on a different object in the world and know where they click so I could have different things happen, but that wasn't really working as I expected it to. Sometimes when I clicked on the potion, it wouldn't get the click event. Sometimes it would, depending on what was in focus. And this is kind of a mess. And I was just actually really confused about how things were working, but I came back to this the next day. Again, I started this day with some pixel art. I tried to improve the bird flying animation by adding some blur frames when it flaps its wings. I think it looks better, so I stuck with that. It looks not bad, right? <laughs> Kind of like it. I then made the bird follow the mouse around the screen again, as I had in my very initial demo. Next, I had decided that I wanted to add a home that the bird could return to when you click on it to get the bird out of your way on the screen. But to do that, I had to figure out what was going wrong with my click events. Both the bird and other objects in the world had area 2Ds on them, which should have allowed me to get input event signals when the user clicked on them. I wasn't sure how to fix this though. I started brainstorming ideas, but nothing was really working. I eventually realized that what I needed to do was query the physics engine for the world directly with the location of my current mouse click. And then if the collider or its parent had a handle click method, I could then just call that method. Kind of weird, but I think it's working. I can now tell if things are getting clicked. I cleaned up the code and then switched to having the world windows push back the events to the main window to handle in one place so that regardless of which window is focused, everything would be handled the same. So now using this functionality, I wanted to add that pet home that the pet would return to whenever you clicked on it. I did some more pixel art and I decided on a simple bird perch. I added it to the game world in a world window and made it so that when you click on it, the pet flies to it and then just sits on it. That's kind of cool. And then I made sure the window movement code was working by having the bird perch move across the screen. I had an issue here though where the bird perch was getting cut off a bit because the world window wasn't sizing exactly correctly even though I was giving it the correct sizing. This was a weird issue to figure out. It took me a lot of time and it ended up just being that if I toggled borderless off and then back on again in the code then it would work fine and be sized correctly. So not the best thing to spend a lot of time on but I fixed it. Oh. Okay, <laughs> this has to be a good no bug, I assume. And I wanted to add the ability to actually move the bird perch around the screen where you wanted it to position your pet. Once that was all working, I made it so that when you 
click on the home and the pet flies to the home that when you drag around the home with the pet on it, it just stays put on it so you can place it wherever you want. And I also fixed some related bugs that were happening when you like grabbed the home out from under the pet very quickly and things like that. Then I wanted to make the pet love you. So I made a quick pixel art heart and then used that as a base for a particle system in Gitto. I played around with the settings for this for a while to get the effect I wanted. And then I made it playback when you clicked on the bird. Initially I had a problem here because the window was the same size as the bird, which meant that the hearts would just get cut off. Oh no, the window is too small. I need to fix this. I could just expand the window and make it bigger from the start, but that would make a bigger area of the screen not clickable, which I kind of wanted to avoid. So my thought was that when you click on the bird, the window would just temporarily expand and then shrink back down after the particles are done playing. Now this did work, but I really only wanted the window to expand upwards because that's where the particles were going and I didn't want to expand the unclickable area where it wasn't necessary, but that was actually really a struggle for me because I'm really bad at this sort of thing and figuring out this sort of world math kind of thing. So this took me a lot longer than I would have liked to figure out. Might have just figured out the formula for this after doing some calculations. I'm really bad at this sort of math. <laughs> Let's see if it works. All right, I think it's doing what I want now. I can see all the heart particles and it's not, you know, covering up too much of the screen outside of where the particles are. Now this day I got some really fun things working. I first added a rainbow shader effect for some reason on the bird and I just thought it was fun. I don't know what I'm using this for but it's fun. Now from the beginning of this project I had the idea that I wanted the pet to be able to interact with open windows on your desktop in some form, maybe walk around the tops of them. And since I switched the pet to being a bird, I thought it'd be fun if the pet could fly to open windows and just land on them and sit on the tops of them. I knew that to get the positions of different windows on the user screens, I would need to access lower level native OS APIs. And I decided to just focus on windows because I thought it'd be too hard to do both windows and Mac. I did some research and learned that I could use C Sharp with P invoke to access Windows native APIs pretty easily. And that was great because Godot supports C-sharp and GDScript, so it would just work. I did though have to download a different version of Godot to get C-sharp scripts working. My thought was that since my entire game was in GDScript, I could just write one C-sharp script that would do the communication with the Windows operating system, get the window positions, and then pass it back to my GDScript for my pet to use for its position. I didn't have any experience with C-sharp or Windows APIs, so I asked AI for a little bit of help to get the boilerplate started and it actually wasn't that difficult. See what happens, I guess? Oh, that actually worked. A lot of windows though. So this isn't too bad really, it's just from the code I got from ChatGPT, I can use this user32 DLL to access Windows APIs through C Sharp and I can get window information. The problem is that it's hard to know which windows are actually visible on the screen. So I think I need to dig a little bit more into the Windows APIs now. So I decided here, instead of spending a ton of time figuring out whether each window is really visible on screen or not, that I would just use a different API, get foreground window, which would return the focused foreground window that the user is interacting with because that window would definitely be visible and then just allow the bird to only fly to that window. So that was surprisingly easy to get working. I just had my C Sharp script pull the foreground window information in its process function. And then in my GD script, I was able to read from that C Sharp script and get the foreground window information. That's cool. That wasn't that hard to get them communicating. <laughs> then all I had to do was check if the active foreground window was actually part of my Godot app or not because I didn't want the bird or the perch window to count. And then I had to check if the window was perchable, meaning that the bird could actually fit so it wasn't too high up on the screen or too far left. Okay, that seems reasonable, I think. Now we should fly to the top of the window in the center. <laughs> and then I just wrote some code to have the bird fly to the middle of the perchable foreground window and it just worked, it was really cool. Look at it go. I love this. I took a three day break from working on the project, but then I came back and I was intent on polishing it up and finishing it. I spent some time just improving the logic around how the bird decides to fly to the mouse, to its home or to a window. This was actually surprisingly tricky because the way I had coded the bird was not the best, pretty messy, and just a ton of different booleans that tracked its state. And if I were making this a bigger project and continuing to work on it, I would definitely need to refactor how the bird code was working and probably move it into some sort of state machine. But since this was my last day working on it, I decided to just grind it out and figure it out with what I had. This code is a bit of a mess, but I think I'm going to leave it for now because I don't feel like fixing it. 
Right. I then added a pop-up menu when you right click on the bird with some settings, including whether the bird should fly to windows and whether it should follow your mouse and also an option to quit. I also made it so the rainbow shader would only show up on double click and then fade away over time. I then decided the bird should make a happy sound when you double click on it. So I went looking for some bird sounds and I experimented with a few different ones before finding one I liked. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. It's fun. It doesn't maybe do everything I had ambitions for, but I think it's good enough for this video. After all these days of work though, I'm still not sure what type of bird this is, so I might just call it bird. <laughs> But yeah, I think we're done. And then I decided I was done. There are definitely a lot more things I could add, but I decided I was happy with what I have for now. And maybe I'll come back in the future and add more. So this is the final pet and it's up now on itch.io, which I'll have linked in the description if you'd like to try it out as well. I'm honestly not totally sure how well this will run on systems that are different than mine because it seems like the transparency stuff is all over the place and not super well supported, but let me know if it works for you. Overall, this was a really fun project and I'm quite happy with the final result, but I did spend quite a bit longer on it than I would have liked and that's because I got stuck on a few different issues and I also didn't really have a strict plan from the beginning of what I actually wanted to implement so I think in the future I will try to have a better plan going into projects. I also do think this project could have been easier in some ways had I not used Godot because a lot of my time was spent fighting Godot systems for windows and transparency and trying to figure out what was going wrong with different parts of Godot itself and I'm not saying these things are definitely Godot's fault but this project may have been a bit easier using something a bit lower level. I think for our next project though I'll try to pick something a bit less weird that has way lower potential for OS related issues. So please try out the desktop bird and let me know what you think and also let me know what projects you'd like to see me tackle in the future. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.